Chief Mrs. Ebele Tukuobiano, wife of the Executive Governor of Anambra State, Chief Dr. Willie Obiano, and her loving mother can best be described as a compassionate, humble, and God-fearing woman. Her uncommon love for the less privileged in our society stands her out as a real role model. Her Excellency's passion for putting smiles on otherwise sad faces came to the fore when she was a welfare officer with NNPC. She developed the culture of donating various items to orphanages and old people's homes. Nothing seems to gladden her heart as much as uplifting the lots of the less privileged. Yeah, what I was doing in the past was uh, kind of similar to what cafe would be offering now, so that that one didn't have a name. I did that on the cover, but this one will be at the full glare of the public. I know that uh, you gain a lot from giving back. I've always believed in uh, you know giving back 10% uh, of your earnings by you know going to the uh, uh, motherless babies so that the orphanages, old people's homes, as well as um, the uh, best two settlements in Lagos. Then we were residing, in, we were resident in Lagos. This passion further blossomed when Chief Mrs. Obiano Oso Dieme became the first lady of Anambra State. To give an official bent to her pet project, Her Excellency structured the Caring Family Enhancement Initiative Cafe as a platform to further her expression of perfection for the needy. <laughs> Cafe is a well articulated response to the outcry of the forgotten members of the society whose well being is just as important as the well being of other Njanambra. A bold initiative that seeks to soothe the pains of the underprivileged children, widows, widowers, and young women and men who are not adequately equipped to fend for themselves. Cafe seeks to restore hope to the society. Having traversed the entire Anambra state in the company of her husband, Chief Willie Obiano, while on his campaign train, she had the first hand impression of the challenges and needs of Indianambra, especially those of the children, widows, and the less privileged. Her Excellency's zeal to improve the lives of Ndianambra compelled her to recognize the relevance of a functional office of the First Lady and His Excellency Aboku Diki obliged her request. Today, for the first time in the history of Anambra State, the office of the First Lady, with its full complements, is effectively in operation. The office is structured to facilitate Her Excellency's drive to complement His Excellency's delivery of dividends of democracy to Ndianambra. State officially uh, declaring uh, open the office of the First Lady of Anambra State. From, uh, from this office, a lot of uh, work will be going on there. Amen. What, uh, regarding women, children, the less privileged, the needy, and what have you. Amen. So the glory of God. Amen. 
working closely with the Ministry of Women Affairs, the First Lady saw the need for the Ministry's old 50-room guest house to be harnessed and put into proper use. Today, the renovation and furnishing of the guest house have been completed. The project has been commissioned. On resumption of office as the First Lady of Anambra State, Chief Ebele Chukwobiano proceeded to visit orphanages, hospitals, primary health care centers, and institutions of the physically challenged. In Basden Memorial Special Education Center at the Sulu, Orumba South Local Government Area, the First Lady saw an educational facility with dilapidated buildings and conditions not suitable for special children. Moved with compassion, she quickly constructed and commissioned a borehole from her own funds to provide clean portable water for the school. I will declare this uh, borehole um, open for these children to get water to bathe and most importantly to drink. So, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I am unveil this project to the glory of God. She was a mother indeed. She had sympathy. She's a kind woman and community and have interest in special school education. Those people in special needs. We are very, very happy because we didn't see such a thing before. Because these people are human beings like us. The fact that they are challenged, be it physically, mentally, whatever, they are just human beings like us. And they have a right to life, a, a right to live. And um, we should not ignore them, nor relegate them to you know, the background. We need to bring them up, make them feel loved. They don't need our sympathy. They need to be part of us. They need to be loved. To be shown love. So I go about looking for such people because I know they need me. She also provided them with food items and some cash. Chief Mrs. Obiano lamented their appalling conditions and promised to get the state government to come to the aid of the students. Her visit as the first First Lady of Anambra to visit the school attracted chairs and songs from the physically challenged children. visit to the school has prompted the state government to commence the rehabilitation of the school's infrastructures. While at the Umuchu Special School for the Disabled in Agwata local government, the First Lady again came bearing gifts for the underprivileged children, listened attentively to their challenges and promised to assist in any way that cafe can. She was encouraged by the quality of items the children in the school produced. The items ranged from various types of soaps, clothes and beads. They are doing well. I mean, when it comes to vocational training, they have it. They had lots of things. I had to buy quite a lot of them off. Them. But um, there's still a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. These children need to be given that sense of belonging. Well, I'm very, very grateful to God. I must appreciate her for being the first uh, governor's wife to visit this type of institution since this inception. And when she came, I, we actually uh, um, experienced a lot of good things, like she donated cash, food items, even cow for the children. We are very grateful. Having these children first in mind means that she is really a mother. And her motherhood will help us to build all this infrastructure we are talking of. Not relenting, she also visited various hospitals 
and primary health care centers in the state. Talking to mothers and mothers-to-be on the need for them to receive proper antenatal care during pregnancy. While visiting these health institutions throughout the state, Chief Ebele Tukuobiano, partnering with the United Nations Population Fund, gave out antenatal packs called Mama Kids. One major achievement of Her Excellency's Foundation is the rescue to two unwanted babies that have been presently taken care of in motherless babies' homes in the state. The first baby was left in the village where she was born. The midwife contacted the first lady who received the child and put her in the orphanage. Um, three days into my husband's uh, uh, swearing in, we got a hint that a lady had a baby in one of the local uh, maternity homes and uh, that's conned. So we quickly went there, saw a beautiful baby girl, the midwife actually, would have made a lot of money from the baby, but she called uh, the government into it and we were very happy. The second child was abandoned by the government lodge and was discovered taking the child to hospital for proper treatment. The first lady named him after her husband, Umada Abuchi. As a matter of fact, we named him after my husband. We gave him my husband's middle name, Umada Abuchi. One of the um, staff at the government lodge had a baby crying. So they went out and behold, behind the fence there was a baby in a, um, a raffia bag. So we took the baby as they, I was out of the country at the time. I told the um, Commissioner for Women Affairs to take the baby to the hospital first for medical attention. When this physically challenged newly delivered mother's plight was brought to the notice of Chief Ebele Chukwobiano, the First Lady swung into action and relocated them to an orphanage in Oka where they are provided the requisite needs for decent and healthy living. It's terrible what people can do. You know, this is a cripple. There is no way of helping herself. For somebody to go there and impregnate her is uh, <laughs> it's just a terrible thing. Her baby is about three months old. She has no help from anywhere. She, you know, uh, she took to uh, street uh, begging. And uh, of course, I don't like seeing anybody that is in distress. And His Excellency wants to, you know, read the roads. A number of state roads of uh, destitute and uh, you know uh, mentally challenged people. So when um, I told the Commissioner for Women Affairs to go out there and see how we can be of help, so the Commissioner saw her and uh, picked her up and we took her into our uh, care. And now she's re receiving medical treatment and. Uh, she and her baby will be there for a while. Well, they helped me a lot to wash my baby clothes, even bath the baby and take care of the baby, even myself. The Excellency Governor and the First Lady is trying, even before their 100 days in office. They came here, they even surprised us. They brought some rice, they brought some wrappers, and they brought even huge amount of money. They have been trying their best in helping this um, modelers for you all. We thank them very much. Chief Ebele Tukuobiano, a lover of children, donated various items to a couple who had quadruplets. She told women present that Chief Willie Obiano has made maternity health care free from antenatal up to delivery. The governor of Anambra State, His Excellency Chief Dr. Willie Obiano, already made it clear that every expectant woman that puts to bed at the government, any of the government hospitals in Anambra State will have their babies and just walk. They won't have to pay a dime to have their baby. Working closely with the local government, CAFE is currently documenting in Danambra with disabilities in a bid to providing them with instruments for easy mobility. These include crutches and wheelchairs and in some cases, prosthetic limbs. We are actually collecting names. We have uh, directed the local government uh, chairman's wives to work uh, with the PGs of their um, 
local government areas all the way to the wards so that uh, they can submit names of people who really really need uh, these names and uh, we get the people that will come and take the measurements at the appropriate time and very soon as a matter of fact um, and we reduce those uh, uh, stuff and uh, give them their lives back. The Caring Family Enhancement Initiative, CAFE, is concluding plans to commence our deworming program in the state but more importantly, CAFE is tackling head-on the menace of malaria, which is the highest killer disease in Nigeria today. We're doing the warming. We're going to start from those uh, physically and mentally challenged. Then we go up to the schools, and then we go to the uh, three senatorial zones, and uh, you know, choose, get some people to treat, and at the end of the day. When we are able to get more resources, we go back to those areas and continue to sell. So malaria has been a killer in this part of the world. We are working with some groups that will be uh, coming around by uh, next month to start uh, you know, treating children. Then we go to the villages, women and all gender. You know, malaria uh, treatment, giving out nets and what have you as well as medications to take care of malaria. The First Lady believes that the family is the bedrock of the society. She recognizes that women play a pivotal role in ensuring peace in the family. She is therefore committed to ensuring proper formal education for women. Her foundation grants scholarships to the best performing students from secondary schools to tertiary levels in Anbu State. Those who cannot further their education will be trained in vocational schools. Caring Family Enhancement Initiative is concluding plans not only to key into the state's scale acquisition programs, but will also establish vocational centers in each of the 21 local government areas of Anambra State. The vocational training uh, complex is still is in uh, progress. They are, you know, they are doing quite a lot, but um, we need to, you know, uh, beef it up. We need to include other trainings. They have like tailoring. They have like beading. They have. Um, um, computer uh, training also, but we want to expand, putting uh, mechanical training, technical training other than, you know, uh, IT, as well as carpentry, among other things, so that we have vast, you know, um, departments where people can just have uh, uh, options, lots of, lots of options, and not just those three uh, uh, trades. We also want to, we're establishing um, agricultural vocational training um, institute somewhere in Niger. We have actually laid the foundation for the poultry as well as where we can do the fishery. But that one will take off everything being equal by the end of August. <laughs> During the state's flag off of the 2014 farming season, the First Lady procured improved seedlings, which she donated to the registered female farmers in the state. I know she working with the Ministry of Local Government. She sprung into action immediately to provide for seedlings, agricultural seedlings, to be able to assist us with them. They are the vulnerable especially as we have them in the rural areas. One thing she did that is very commendable is that she sought to know where the poor of the poor are. And because here we have a poverty mapping, she was able to address that challenge, able to capture them where they really are and she's facing those areas. Well. As Her Excellency Chief Ebele Tukuobiano, also DMA, labors to complement the efforts of her husband, Governor Willie Obiano, 
she urges well meaning in the Anambra and all people of goodwill to join hands with her in putting smiles on the faces of the less privileged. So I am pleading with the Anambra people. It doesn't have to be the Anambra people alone. People across the world, donor agencies, even people from other states can help. We also can extend a hand of the fellowship to them in their the time of need. So we are making a passionate plea to India Nambra to come out and mass. Let God touch their hearts so that we can help these down children. We never can tell who would be what tomorrow. And that is why we need to be really very careful in our dealings with our fellow human beings. Because tomorrow is really deep and tomorrow nobody knows. We want to thank the First Lady, Mrs. Obiano, for helping the less privileged. Children say thank you! Thank you.